Good afternoon, everybody. Um, appreciate it. I just thought, uh, um, obviously, this is my first full recruiting class. I think about, you know, today, um, the 15th, and, and being four days short of a year ago since I took the job. Uh, this is a, a full cycle in a year. Um, I always kind of talk in terms of being a happy new year uh, from a, a coach's standpoint because this is really, truly um, – the start of a new recruiting class uh, moving forward, but uh, because the NCAA rules, because of the portal world and a lot of other things in between, it goes on probably far beyond uh, this signing date, as you can imagine. Um, we are going to sign a majority of our guys in this class, obviously with the with the 22 guys that we had uh, uh, signed with us today, but uh, still have the opportunity for more in the future. Um, because of NCAA rules, I can't talk about uh, uh, guys that could potentially be here through the, through the transfer portal uh, in January until they start classes here. Uh, as we go forward. So have the addition of making this class a little bit bigger as we go. Um, guys that uh, have entered the transfer portal for us, but also guys that declared for the NFL allow us to gain back some scholarships as we go forward past the normal 25. So, uh, you know, I think about uh, this day uh, starting um, the day I took the job with some phone calls to Illinois high school coaches immediately that day uh, before I did any media or did anything uh, other than reach out to a bunch of Illinois high school coaches really in-state, downstate. Uh, everywhere in between, and, and it's kind of carried forward uh, with a lot of different phone calls to high school coaches. Uh, I can't tell you how many Zoom calls I've done at that Zoom room um, with our staff. Um, uh, unofficial visits, it started with players coming to campus, actually started with, we we're still under the dead period where, um, though we couldn't be with a prospect, we knew that they were coming to campus. We'd kind of guide them as best we can within the NCAA rules, but we couldn't see them face to face. Uh, so very, very unique time in this recruiting process, and then to have the Camps open up in June uh, where we could actually have guys on campus uh, for one-day camps, one-day evals, really a one-time wonder, I think. Uh, we had a couple of players that are actually in this signing class as a result of that. Uh, and then obviously when, unof when official visits began, uh, to have some of those guys hit campus for the first time where we could make it tangible, where we see them in person, live, face-to-face uh, -face has been a, a full circle. Um, and really, uh, uh, you know, I look at it, it's 22 signees, right, 21 high school kids, one junior college player. Uh, but 15 offensive players, seven defensive players. You can group this class in a variety of different ways. I do think there's some offensive guys that have defensive talent. I think there's some defensive guys that have offensive talent, which we'll see here in a minute when we go through the film. Uh, I think about this, right? Three countries, um, United States, Canada, and Denmark. Um, not many times you can say that. Uh, one of the first uh, uh, guys to uh, sign his papers uh, last night uh, uh, was, was obviously uh, uh, here at the University of Illinois. Three countries, eight states. Um, but really 10 players from the state of Illinois. Um, and as I said in our opening press conference where we are today, that's going to be the staple of what we are. Uh, those 10 players from the state of Illinois represent five state titles uh, during their career. Um, several conference championships and obviously the, the big state championships. But I also look at it this way, right? we got five guys uh, from, the, from the Catholic League in Chicago. Um, ever since I've been a young coach to where I am today, you know, people come into the state of Illinois from across the country to recruit the Catholic League in Chicago and they have five players um, uh, represented in that league. And then also uh, talked about how we're going to recruit the state from tip to tip uh, and to have Hank Beatty uh, be the Gatorade Player of the Year um, and have him sign here at the University of Illinois. Uh, I didn't obviously do that in the intention of uh, signing Hank that hoped that he became a Gatorade Player of the Year was just a byproduct of him playing really good football. Um, and that's the first time that's been done, I believe, since 2010 with Riley O'Toole. Um, so to have the uh, a player in the state who's recognized the Gatorade Player of the Year um, come here to Illinois is huge, right? 172 wins, 68 losses, one tie. Uh, we put an emphasis on winning. Um, uh, in your background, it's not an all all L B all, right? But uh, we want to win here. And I think to change the culture of what's uh, been behind us, we have to cultivate the, on the front end. So the more kids that understand what winning is coming on the front end and won't tolerate losing, I think goes a long, long way. Uh, so there is an emphasis on going after championship type programs. Um, but we also recruited a young man here as of late who hasn't won a high school program, high school game in his career, right? Um, so um, it's not an all LB, uh, like I say, all NB all, uh, but that's a huge, huge deal. Um, we had four guys with undefeated seasons uh, in this in this class, right? So they didn't lose a game unblemished uh, where, where it goes. And then several with just one or two losses on the entire senior season. So uh, very excited to get this group in the room. Um, uh, I'll really get specific when we're going through the film, but uh, there's so many different stories that go with this recruiting class. Um, uh, again, a lot of it was unique in the fact the very first time we ever saw him was on those official visits. So we'd gotten to know him through Zoom 
uh, through phone calls, through text, through FaceTimes, uh, kind of a moving world in a world of recruiting. But uh, there's always an emphasis on that 48-hour period, but nothing like probably this year than ever before. I knew those kids were going to be starving. They've never been really recruited over the last year and a half of their life. Uh, so to get them here on campus, for us as coaches, we were new to campus as well. So we really had to rely on, um, you know, for instance, Josh, right, as our athletic director, but also someone that walked the walk here um, that has been in charge of the athletic department that knows exactly what these kids are going to be looking for. Uh, Corey Patterson, who's a holdover from our last staff, Pat Ambleton, um, uh, who, who's our director of recruiting, and just kind of what's been done in the past. But I thought it was very interesting for us as new coaches. We probably bought a perspective that no one else could provide, right? We saw things that no one else had seen. We saw strengths. We saw weaknesses. Uh, one of the first things I did is move the hotel location of our recruits. I just felt like if you bring a young man in uh, from uh, a certain part of the country and, and put him uh, uh, downtown in Champaign, uh, that would be a, a positive thing for us, right? So we did some things logistically. Coach Underwood allowed us to come into the basketball arena and have a breakfast, on, the, on an academic breakfast on the floor, uh, of, of, well, actually in the, in the uh, basketball arena, and, and just really kind of started the day off with a little different pizzazz that, uh, that had never been uh, really accomplished before. So a partnership with basketball, as well as many other people on campus, uh, from everything, how we ate to where we ate, uh, to uh, Coach McDonald being a former player, he had a perspective that none of us had, and his uh, Hall of Fame campus tours on a golf cart, uh, I, I quickly heard a lot about. Um, I never got invited for one, but uh, hope to in the near future. So just really, just the attention to detail. I told our coaches early on, because we don't have the wins to back it up, the difference has to be us, right? The difference has to be how we present ourselves, the relationships we build, and, and the way that we can put ourselves in front of these young men, but also their families uh, moving forward. So um, before I move on to some questions, uh, and then we'll get into film, uh, when you guys got your questions done, I can come back at the back end as well. Just want to say thank you to Josh and administration. Um, uh, everything since we've been here has been, what can we do, what can we do, what can we do? Um, uh, very few no's along the way, just, just uh, bent over backwards to give us the resources to do it, including this last week, being able to be uh, everywhere across the country where we need to be, um, to my staff. I had them all sitting here in the back of the room. I do want them to have a chance to speak to you on the back end. They're the guys that were doing the, uh, uh, the grunt work on a daily basis. Uh, um, uh, from endless text conversations and, and setting up Zooms and, and details and follow-up uh, and creativity, just, just an, un an unbelievable staff to be around. And then our recruiting staff, Pat Umbleton and his crew, uh, assembled a group of guys really that came in. Um, I knew my 10 coaches were going to be in effect on this program immediately, from my coordinator to, to the last guy I hired, but I knew that that recruiting personnel department was going to be huge. I um, uh, didn't know Pat Umbleton coming into it. Um, uh, he's a guy that had been here for... I believe uh, seven years, eight years prior to that, that um, you know had been in a variety of different roles, and I could just see as we worked through several weeks. This is a guy I wanted to uh, put my arm around and put my uh, uh, um, uh, recruiting department in his hands. Uh, brought in several guys that have been a part of my past. Pat Pearson, who had been with me at Arkansas, came from uh, Oregon, and, and a lot of stuff you see with our NIL, social media, uh, just all the events of this morning. There's a lot of things that Pat has his hands. Uh, Jay Kaiser. Um, a guy that I've been with at the past that was in the NFL, has really been in charge of our transfer portal. Uh, Nate McDeal, who had been here in the past, uh, we're looking for a certain type of role to be filled uh, to work hand in hand with uh, um, uh, Pat Emelton, and Nate uh, has been a champion on that um, to bring in Coach Ryan, um, an Illinois high school coach, and, and to let him have an effect on our program on a daily basis. Somebody that knows this place better than anybody, what's better way to relate to Illinois high school coaches than to hire one of the best ones there ever was. Um, and, you know, uh, Terry Hawthorne, uh, a former player, and because of, of us hiring him from uh, where he was at in East St. Louis, that prevented us, in theory, uh, from being able to go back in there. There's some new changes that have allowed schools. We saw that evident today uh, where schools can maybe go in and recruit uh, players that have had past relationship with high school coaches, so that's an option that we'll explore. But um, And then uh, just some other, you know, Valuable pieces of, of the of the of the program here that have been huge. So I, I really want to say thanks to that group and, and move forward. So um, with that, I'll open it up for some easy questions. Yes. Uh, much, much of your career has been spent with that February, you know. Yes. One day Sunday day. Now the last four years, it's early Sunday day too. What's your thoughts on this whole? Yeah, process? you know. So I didn't get to sign them right, but uh, I had prepared for an early signing day, uh, my last job, um, and and. 
Uh, really, the only significant thing to me, right, is that at the, the whole timetable moved up quite a bit. Uh, but I think back to last year, you know, we didn't use all of our scholarships up for a reason. You know, the last year, uh, the two kids that I signed on National Signing were two guys that probably played the most amount of snaps for us. Um, you know, Josh McCray was obviously a huge part of what we're, not only what we did last year, but what we're going to do in the future. Um, and and uh, Dwayne Johnson, uh, you know, got considerable reps for us, especially early on. So I didn't want to tap us out um, because I do think there's going to be good players available for that second signing. I think you got to be selective about that. We've actually probably front loaded a lot more high school players and you'll see a lot of people do, I believe in a development program. Um, even the players, I'm, I'm concerned about the portal, but I'm not overly concerned, right? Even the players that entered the portal for us right now, literally every one of them came in and almost borderline apologized. Like coach, you know, like I don't want to do this, but this is something I have to do and gave me great reasons um, and, and uh, work through it. There weren't any hostile moments or, or anything of, of anything more than just trying to do what's best for everybody involved. Um, so, um, you know, the only thing that I really regret is um, we had a two week window to recruit uh, before today and I wasn't able to get in every home of the kids that we signed here today. Um, we put a huge emphasis. Nine of our players that we signed today will be on campus in January. I only had 10 really, really working days, 10 to 11 working days. So I couldn't get in every home. Um, and that's when you really get to know them, right? Like uh, everybody always says, what's your best recruiting stories? And by far, they're on the home visits, right? It's when you as a head coach get to go to the home. You get to know them on their terms, right? Like anybody they come here, they're kind of your guest, right? Like even official or unofficial, everybody's got a different feel. But when you go to that home, now you're in an environment where they're comfortable, right? And you get to know the crazy uncle uh, that no one talks about, right? You get to see the, the pet selection. You get to... You know, I've had everything from possum stew to uh, 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 traditional American meatloaf, right? Anywhere and in between. So you, you, you really get a different perspective when you're in that home. And that's really the only biggest difference for me is I haven't been, I can't wait to get out in January. A, a simple thing like um, we're going alphabetical orders. The first guy that we're gonna see, talk about here is Isaiah Adams, right? Who's a Canadian, right? Um, that uh, played at uh, 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 Garden City Junior College. And one of the comments I said to him the day that I went to see him in Garden City. I sent Coach Miller to Canada, right? Um, because you have to see him on the same, you know, in the same window. And I, I think about this all the time. Like I told him specifically when he was here on the visit this past weekend, I wasn't able to go see your mom. You come to us and I'm going to go see your mom the first opportunity I get because she's important to you. She's important to me, right? I've talked to her on the phone. Um, and I just think that family atmosphere build, builds into everything we do. Sure. Yeah. Um, this is obviously your biggest stamp on the roster so far. The first class is kind of known as a foundation. What, what do you look for? What is important? What is significant about that first class and building? Yeah, the question is what's significant about this first class, right? And I think it embodies what we believe in, right? We have a strong foundation of defensive linemen and offensive linemen, especially offensive linemen. We signed five high school players, one college player, um, just because of pure numbers. I know there's a big to-do about what I said during the course of the year, but it really was based on we need numbers. I knew I was losing you know, potentially five of the top six players in that group. So to get them and build them um, has been been a huge part of this class. Um, I'm not a big believer in signing multiple quarterbacks in the same class. Like I get it, like last year I added, uh, uh, obviously they signed a high school quarterback for us here and I added Art into it. Uh, this year we um, obviously signed Donovan and we may add a, a, a more senior uh, uh, transfer player, but um, I think the important to get a quarterback that kind of fits into what we're doing. I think Donovan did that. Um, we got two running backs, kind of like a big and little version, uh, right? Like I've really had success in my career in everything, uh, every size of running back known to man. And, and I think that was a big part when we got Jordan, got Aiden, two in-state players that have played at the highest level, have been huge. Defensively, we knew it was going to be a smaller class of players that we added. I think premier-wise, uh, to add Jared Beatty uh, and, and um, uh, Gabe uh, Ackes uh, at the outside linebacker, that's a position that I really feel strong about, the type of defense we play. Uh, with Ryan and that crew, uh, Coach Kane, the development of, I think the two most improved players on our defense were OC and, and uh, Isaiah, and I think we really started playing good when they started playing well. And to have those two guys coming in as true freshmen outside linebackers um, is really special. We beat them on SEC competition at the last minute, really almost the same school for both of them. Um, so to, to feel good about that position, um, uh, really our latest addition last night to add James Crutch, who's a guy that I fell in love with when I watched his film. Uh, in, in late October, early November. Uh, I couldn't tell you how excited I was to make that call uh, to offer him and uh, get him to be a part of our family. So I think they represent our kind of guys. I always tell that to and, and our coaches when they come off the road and maybe they meet someone for the first time, they'll say, hey, coach, he's our kind of guy. 
and I automatically know what that means. They know what it means. Um, on the same flight side of it, they'll say, Coach, he's not our kind of guy, and I got it, right? So we've only been together a year, but I think we all kind of know what that means. Interior defensive line wasn't addressed in this signing classes. Was that by design because of the numbers, and is it a position you're going to continue to look at uh, throughout the winter and spring? Yeah, I, I think um, – you know, obviously last year, Sign said before I got here, right, and, and he's a guy that's been very intriguing to me during the fall. He has some 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 uh, tremendous upside that I think we can't wait to capitalize on. Um, uh, we, we actually, um, uh, how should I say this, um, we're not done, uh, right? So like anything that uh, isn't, isn't covered can be covered in the near future. Um, and then uh, obviously transfer portal things, even guys that have, everybody think, I think traditionally used to think portal is, one year, two year remaining. Now you can get guys that have three and four years of eligibility remaining, especially with this COVID world. So it's it's a very unique time in that world. Yeah. Yeah, so when we first got going as class, there was actually limits on the number of players you could have on one group message, right? As silly as that is, right? And and uh, that's evolved now during the course of time. But um, one of the things I, I give Nate a, a lot of credit, Nate uh, especially drove uh, uh, some of the uh, in-state recruiting in the Chicagoland group. So, you know, Beatty, uh, the JCA boys, and, and, and uh, uh, Ian kind of connected right away. And we had a, a Zoom call where I remember it was just us, right? And it was just me and those guys talking about the Illinois boys. And then... We had a four core down below. We got three of those four uh, down here in Illinois. Um, but really just the amazing part for me really was when we got on the road and started recruiting in December and I started hearing stories when I was in the homes from these parents. Um, uh, Mountain Moller, right? So he's a kid from Denmark that got added late here in the class. Um, <laughs> every home I went into, every parent and every kid, offense, defense, if I'm in Illinois, if I was in Florida, I talked about him, right? And his, uh, just his personality, his demeanor, and they have this huge group chat uh, going on. And, and uh, even just as recent, as recent as yesterday, when we pulled a guy out of that group chat, right, that didn't want to, uh, 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 didn't wasn't going to sign with us. Everybody right away had 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 to, had to know the answer, right? So I knew they're communicating basically, essentially, instantly on every action. Um, to see on social media when I see. Donovan O'Leary, you know, in the middle of November, comment on something that Joey Okla did, or or Jared Beatty comment on something uh, 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 that Ian Pugh did, or or really when they be, Sean Miller, who's down in IMG, and was in amidst all their memories, like it just, it, it it's it's undeniable that the more relationships we can build during the recruiting process, only help. We we were a five and seven team overall, but there was a while there where things weren't going exactly great, and to have. Really, just one player uh, remove himself from our commitment list, I think, speaks a lot to our coaches, but really to our recruits on who they stand for and what they represent. Brett, you had a lot of these guys committed for a pretty good amount of time. What did you like about maybe what those, these last four additions, or two last night, two today, maybe did to this group as a whole? Just you know, um, it was important for us, like, I think, to start out strong, right? We wanted to get uh, guys that we felt strong about, put our best foot forward. I never really apply pressure. I'm not saying that we don't suggest things, but I think any any commitment you get through pressure is usually short-lived, or it's usually under the bad under wrong pretense, right? I want someone to come to you when the time is right. So um, as they began to come in, we would just kind of feed off it, build off it. Um, didn't really try to push anybody in a in a certain direction. Uh, I think really about uh, our first bye week, we took an inventory of where we're at. What do we really need to go after now? And then some of it's just timing, right? Um, uh, you look at Tyson Rooks, right? We just literally found out about him about three or four weeks ago. Uh, and uh, uh, somebody connected with Tony, um, a coach at his high school, reached out to TP. TP uh, gave it to Ryan. Ryan loved the defensive film, passed it on. All of a sudden, there's this buzz in the office about Tyson Rooks, right? And then um, Gabe Yak Akis, um, uh, sounds like a joke, right? Uh, so I have a buddy named Jack Daniels uh, that, that uh, um, uh, is a high school coach down in, in, in West Palm Beach who's been a friend of mine uh, for a long time, uh, uh, but he, he he and I met at Dwyer High School in 1996. Um, uh, at his wedding, my wedding, uh, become great friends, and he he literally was scouting an opponent and and saw Gabe running around, and he like hit me up that night. He said, "Bro, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna want to go look at this this kid at Fort Pierce Central. Uh, they were playing Lenny Jankowski, who used to be uh, Jack's offensive coordinator. 
he called me and said, hey, you're going to want to look at this. Uh, the head coach was actually the uh, 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 coach that accompanied Lenny Jankowski when we were uh, at Wisconsin, uh, beat number one Ohio State uh, while we were at home. They, they would, came to my house, right? Just like all kinds of these crazy connections that led us to Gabe. And then as soon as I sent uh, Aaron Henry down on Monday during a bye week, as soon as we found out, I sent him there. He, he obviously eyeballed him. We couldn't talk to him at that point and, and just felt really good about what he represented. And all of a sudden, we're in a recruiting battle, and that went down to the last wire here today. But sometimes it's just strictly timing because they come in late. that that you like and was there a point in your career where you identified that hey this is something you know, we'd like to do as much as we as we can as long as we're able to yeah i think the the early commitment thing is i'm sorry early enrollment is, has been a positive like so one of the first kids that i ever had was a guy by the name of travis frederick who ended up being a first round draft pick and and i really think the advantage of coming in during the second during this this january enrollment is a uh, you know they have a slower uh, um uh uh acceleration to the to the uh, football world right like they come in during fall camp it's like full speed uh, full full uh, a garden hose full of information coming at you right fire hose full of information and you're practicing and you got games um, you're hitting classes for the first time now they'll come in in January we'll get about a four-day orientation they'll have an eight-week window of, of preparation with tank and his crew will slowly involve uh, football They'll take a week of spring break. They'll come back and have five weeks of spring football, uh, two weeks of uh, uh, post-spring uh, uh, work in the, in the classroom, go home for three weeks, and then come back in the summer and enter with the next freshman, the same freshman class, and go through everything all again. So they really get installed twice. Um, and it just comes at a better pace that I think really, and just, just human nature, right? Think about when you were 18 years old and you went to college. When you come in during the summer, you come in June, you really don't leave till, till December. Um, when you come in during January, you get a spring break in eight weeks. Uh, you get a, a three-week break in, in, in about six weeks after that. Then you get another week before we start fall camp. It just breaks up that monotony that much better. You weren't in this world for the last couple of years. You weren't recruiting. To get back to it and now have a class, can you just explain or describe what this entire process was like to get back to the world of recruiting? Yeah, um, question being, you know, that was out for three years, uh, really, in the in recruiting world. but. Um, the way I'm wired, like I'm recruiting every day, right? Like I like people, um, like learning things from people, and I don't think that really changed, even though I might have been in the New England Patriots facility uh, and I wasn't recruiting to a signing day. I was recruiting players every day, right? Let's get to know each other. Let's build a relationship. Let's see what I can give you. Let's see what you can give me to help each other. Um, so I get the question, but it really, um, I didn't ever felt like I was out for a day. And in the Zoom world, I'm, I'm just telling you, uh, Josh was giving me a tour uh, literally the first day I was here. and. Um, that area that I set up as a Zoom room, they never really used, right? And as soon as I walked in, I'm like, ooh, this is a good Zoom room. And everybody's kind of looking at me like I got three heads. I'm like, we're going to put a camera there, I'm going to put a table there, and I'm going to be able to show uh, film to my current players, and I'm going to be able to recruit uh, players through Zoom. Um, and we, we, we wore that thing out. We've got our money out of that room. Um, so I, I, I get the question. I have an unbelievable staff. Like, every home I walk into, like, they know everybody walking in. Every school, they know who's... Well, when we walk in the door, how to get to the person that we need to get to, just the attention to detail from that staff and the planning of it um, has really been exceptional, and that's probably allowed us to be very successful. With these, with these, 20, sorry, with these 22 uh, and the current NCAA rules, uh, you know, allowing you to go over 25, do you, can you tell us how many more no. uh, scholarships you have available? <laughs> no. You get 25 by rule, then you get seven extra. But I had coach. I had some that I blue shirted from a year ago, um, and we may choose to use or not use. Um, so it really is a number that I, I know what it is. Um, I may choose to, you know, reward uh, walk-on scholarships. We will not be able to get to 85 scholarships, just the way the numbers are laid out, which is my biggest concern. Like everybody wants to talk about NIL and all this stuff. My only concern is um, this transfer portal and the way that, especially when you're a coach taking over a program. Uh, even when they give us these seven extended scholarships, there's a, there, you, you may not be able to get to 85 on by addition of, of players, right? You can award walk-ons, which is what I did, you know, a little bit of last year. But uh, to go out, to me, it should be one in, one out. Everybody should have 85 scholarships at any given time. To me, there's no other way to go around it. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that we don't do it that way. Um, I know there's discussions of like a swinging 50. You can sign 31 year and 20 the next year, but that's just ridiculous because you never know. I like. Right now, I had several players, not several, but a couple players go to the NFL, um, some expected, one or two not expected. 
that, in addition to the portal, plus the guys you're losing, could be a number greater than 32, right? And, and it just, it's insane that you can't get to 85. So it just absolutely, uh, again, I'll say it one time, like, it's like a seventh grade science project, right? You're supposed to have one variable uh, to figure out what the experiment is, right? Like, there's a reason the, the, the stuff went boom, right? Like, it's because you put this one ingredient into it. Well, we're, we've got like four ingredients. We got, we got COVID year bonus, we got NIL, we got transfer portal, we have uh, uh, grad, grad transfers, and all four of those things together are creating an environment that just no one knows what the hell is going on. Um, and that, that's the one part that gets frustrating. Can we sign in here? Let's yeah. Get back to that one more thing about that. There's been talk about that maybe either being eliminated or Todd Berry's been talking about it, maybe moving it a different time. What's your thoughts on that? I wish they just kind of stay with what they've been doing, right? And uh, just let's let's stay constant for a while. We've had enough moving parts here in the last you know two years, three years that uh, let's just try to stay constant, let things evolve uh, to where it's at, let everybody know the rules. Um, I think the thought is if they moved. Back to just a February signing period, it would. The kids are still going to enter the transfer portals. Kids are still going to, you know, declare for the NFL. Kids are still going to uh, uh, want to have transition. Um, the one thing that the early signing period does, it's a very cost-effective measure. So, all these kids that we got now, 22 players, they're locked in. They can't go anywhere. I guess they could enter the transfer portal, which would probably be unheard of, you know, before they even hit campus. But um, I'm not saying it can't be done either, right? But um, uh, I think the to stay on a steady pace and be consistent would be a really good step in the right direction. Yeah. Okay.